I think what's narratively fascinating about The Last of Us is it's a new kind of apocalypse and the story of our compulsion to dominate. So at the end of the third episode, we saw Joel and Ellie leaving in Bill's car, and for the first time, you got a sense that they were a team. And that theme carries through into the fourth episode. There's an uneasy truce, but they're not necessarily anything more than, as he says, cargo. Joel? Hmm. Did you know diarrhea is hereditary? What? Yeah. It runs in your genes. Joel secretly loves Ellie's humor and her jokes and her puns. He pretends he doesn't, but he does. I think that means a lot to Ellie that he does actually find her funny. I don't think she ever worries about annoying him. She kind of loves it. Feel free to wait in the truck. <sighs> we decided to deviate a bit from the game. In the game, they made their way to Pittsburgh. So in looking around at possible places, we landed on Kansas City because it just felt like it was a good match for sort of what we had and where we were to shoot in Calgary. I had an idea about which episodes that I was going to have to uh, get my head around quite early on. There was a breakdown of various action sequences in episode four, and thank God I had such an extraordinary team to help me. Please help! Put your seatbelt on. Are we gonna help him? No. It's quite a fun day, it's just crashing cars. It's, you know, that's why we got into this business. Ellie witnessed Joel being violent at the end of the first episode. And this is a moment where, when they're under attack, Ellie has to trust Joel. You see that hole? When I say go, you crawl to that wall, and you squeeze through, and you don't come out until I say. He is this protector. He is this violent man. He's going to take care of her. But what she encounters very quickly is how ugly that violence is. He is attacked by someone else who is going to kill him. And Ellie, who has found a gun, walks out and saves Joel through an act of violence. And Ellie is confronted by the horror of what she did and what she's capable of. Joel has an opportunity to comfort her. He doesn't. And you can see how quickly Ellie just wipes those tears away and pretends nothing happened at all because she's just like him. This was another thing that we discussed early on. How do we personify this group? Because in the game, there were just an obstacle. How do we give them a face? And here, it would be interesting if they were more than an obstacle, they'd feel like people with a real goal and real motivation and humanity. So with the character of Kathleen, we get to see that she's this ruthless leader, and she clearly has the respect of this group that managed to take down a quarantine zone. Find who did this. Find every collaborator and kill them all in the gaming world. Playing Tommy was one of the unexpected joys of my career. So to be a part of that world again and see it come to life three-dimensionally is really exciting. Harry and Kathleen, they're new characters. Kathleen is the leader of the resistance. And because of Perry's past in the military, he is willing to follow her lead. Kathleen is a tough woman. She's a very principled woman, but she definitely has a dark side. When there is a dramatic shift in power from a repressive regime being overthrown by a revolutionary force, history is full of examples where the revolutionary force is just as bad as what was there before. And here in Melanie Linsky, we have that embodied. I love humanizing villains. And so much of The Last of Us is about people that have to make choices. Joel! And whether they're heroes or villains really depends on your perspective. 